there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, the beginning of a series to start a scale model build. Well, I have received request after request after request after request for me to do one of my scale model builds on the show. And uh, I tell you, I, I have wrestled with this in my head for ages as far as how to do it. And I may have bitten off more than I can chew here by bringing it to the show because I have no idea how to do it and I have no idea how to actually translate it into a program. It will obviously be a multi-part build, but part of making these things, guys, is the challenge of overcoming the problems that you encounter when making it. And we will be using um, two different sets of plans here for this build, actually. They're from Toys and Joys, and one of them will be pattern number 108, and the other will be pattern 109. So we will have the uh, tractor trailer and, of course, the flatbed trailer to go with it. Um, I'm not sure of the overall dimensions that we're going to end up with, and I don't even know really what I'm going to do for this. But what I can do is show you some of the methods that I use to uh, make this model. And as we go along, if you want to follow along with your own set of plans and that sort of thing, then that's great. There may be sections in this particular set of plans that you would have problems with, and I might be able to help you overcome those problems and move forward with the build. Um, guys, this is not a tutorial. This is not anything like you can build this. I will not send you a set of plans. That's just wrong. Um, but what this is, is an aid to go with a set of plans to show you some of the methods that I use to create these particular models. And uh, I'll probably end up adding a little bit of my own touch. Sometimes I remove elements of the plans because I don't like them. And I think there has never been a set of plans where there was not dimensions missing. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to start by opening up the set of plans for the actual uh, uh, truck of this thing and see what it is that we're looking at. Well, here we have pattern 108, which is the WS tractor. And they come with the cover sheet, which shows a picture of the completed model. And basically, they give you a material list for what you will need. Now, they do include prefabricated wheels and axle pins and dowels and that sort of thing. I don't do any of that. I make all of my own. I don't buy any pre-made parts. So it's up to you what you want to do. You can make your own if you wish, or you can buy theirs. Um, I bought the pattern. I think that's all I really should have to do. Anyway, I have found that for the most part with these particular plans, they are chronological. In other words, what I mean by that is the sheets are numbered one through what have you. This one here is seven of nine. Uh, this one here, where are we at here? Other than being upside down, we're four of nine. And the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you've got all of your sheets. So one through nine. And when I mean that they're chronological, what I mean is you want to start with sheet one. You don't want to be jumping through to sheet eight and start building parts. It doesn't work that way. You'll end up getting yourself into trouble. So we're going to start with page one. And usually what page one is for these particular plans is an overall view of the uh, side of the model and kind of like a little illustrated view up here. Now, these views here in general are a one to one scale for what it is that you're going to be building. These all of these plans are scaled at full size. So if there's a dimension missing, you can measure on the plan and get that measurement um, that you're missing by taking a measurement. So in this case here, if you weren't sure where something was placed and you can't find it in the plan, you could measure the distance between the wheels or the size of the wheels or that sort of thing. You, you, you get the idea. So in, for this particular model, it looks like we're going to be starting with the frame. And they usually start with this. And 
this is a three quarter inch piece of lumber and it's 19 inches long according to what we have written here. That sort of thing is something that you're going to want to check. Don't take it for granted that it's right. So just take a measurement and see if it is in fact 19 inches. And you will be taking different pieces and putting it together. What they've got is your individual pieces here of your like tail light stiffeners and your chassis spacers, your rear chassis spacers. They have given you very specific dimensions and very specific profiles. And the, of course, two base pieces here, they're telling you to make two. And then up top, they give you an overall assembly view. And this looks very intimidating to a lot of people, but if you take it step by step, you're gonna do okay. So what I'm gonna start with is making the frame pieces. And for that, it looks like we need quite a bit of three quarter inch thick lumber. Well, I did say I wasn't quite sure how to go about this and I've already given you some misinformation with three quarter inch stock. While you could go three quarter inch stock, looking at the frame pieces, they are three quarters of an inch high, but they're showing in this side profile that they're three eighths of an inch wide. So for that, we're gonna need three eighths of an inch stock cut to three quarters of an inch uh, in width. Now you could go the other road and make it three quarters of an inch thick stock and cut it to three eighths of an inch thick. That is 100% up to you. Either way, we're gonna need a couple pieces that are 19 inches by three quarters by three eighths for the frame pieces. So if you're following along, cut up all those frame pieces with the tail light stiffeners and the chassis spacers and the rear chassis spacer. And um, for now, just leave them as block pieces and then we'll get into what we're gonna do with them once we get those pieces cut. Well, we've got our five pieces cut for the main frame assembly and there's nothing wrong with taking your piece and placing it onto your print to check for accuracy to make sure that it's the right size. Um, accuracy counts here, guys, and one of the keys to having a successful model build is making sure that your pieces are accurate. So for this case, these are fine. This piece here is fine. They're all the same, an inch and a half by three quarters by three eighths of an inch thick. Now, the one difference here, of course, is this piece, which is the rear chassis um, spacer. And you'll notice here that there is actually a bevel cut in this. Now, from my experience, I'm not gonna cut this yet. I will cut this once the chassis is all put together. There's also that same bevel on this back end of the chassis, and from my experience, I've just found that it's easier to cut it when it's all glued together to make sure that you get nice clean lines. What we are going to do though, is at this point, we're going to drill these holes in the chassis. So the measurements are here. We're gonna follow along with those measurements, mark out our holes, and we're gonna drill these 1 8 holes in both of our chassis length pieces. We've got those holes drilled. We're ready to assemble the actual chassis or the frame here. And throughout this build, what I'm gonna be doing is giving you little tips and little bits of advice that I use uh, when I'm making one of these. And this right here is tip number one. And that would be a piece of three quarter inch MDF with sandpaper adhered to it using um, spray adhesive. Now, a lot of sanding has to be done on pieces like this, but you don't want to change their shape or don't want to change your size. It doesn't take a lot to sand these pieces. And uh, we're only using poplar for the frame here. We will add other species as we go along. But this three quarter MDF with a piece of sandpaper is your best friend for sanding pieces and keeping those edges nice and crisp. Don't over sand, don't go crazy on this here. You're just taking off a little bit of the edge as far as uh, any little roughness from the table saw. So we've got these pieces and we're gonna put them together. One thing I'll mention about drilling, 
make sure that you got a backer board behind each piece so that when your hole comes through your stock, you're not getting tear out. Secondly, use brad point bits. It'll help you with your accuracy and it'll help with the cleanness of each one of the holes. And the last thing that I want to point out, even though you're using a brad point bit, center punch these things. And I don't mean put the punch down and give that thing a drive home. I mean, just give it a little indentation for that brad point to find the center and to guide that hole to get the accuracy that you require. These models are all about accuracy, so center punch the holes. So I've yapped off enough about that. Let's get this frame glued together. And the most important thing here is to get it square. So let's start with that. Well, regardless of how flat my workbench is or how crooked it is, it doesn't matter. I like to do assembly on a piece of three quarter inch MDF to make sure I've got a nice flat surface. And I use wax paper on the top to make it so that any squeeze out doesn't glue my pieces to the MDF. Now, in order to glue this frame together, if we're looking at these prints, we get this assembly drawing up here, which shows that we've got a chassis spacer here, a chassis spacer here, and one at the very back end of our whole assembly. Now that's fine and dandy, the whole nine yards. So we know the front one goes right at the end and we know the back one goes right at the end, but where the heck does this middle one go? There is no dimension that I can find that would help me with that. But there's no other parts, it seems, that connect to that or that it would get in the way of. So it looks like it's in line with the mounting bracket of our fuel tank. And just like I told you before, you can reference other drawings because they are to scale here. So from the back of our whole assembly all the way to where that first bracket is 12 and a half inches. So this at 12 and a half inches from the back end is where I will mount that spacer. So you want to have things ready for your glue up. And for that, you're going to need some water. You're going to need some Q-tips and you're definitely going to need a square to keep things right, to make sure that everything is lined up. We don't need a crooked truck frame. Also, don't try to do both pieces at once do one at a time. So we're gonna take this piece here, we're gonna end up gluing this piece on using a square to make sure that it's both flush at the back and square in this corner. And then we're gonna glue the one on the end and then we're gonna take our measurement and we're gonna glue this one in. Once those are dried, then we can take our other piece and using a square, line it all up, get a clamp on it and be done with it. And that particular glue up will end up being our frame. And then we can move on to some other parts that we're working on on this model build. So the glue that we are using for this um, build is just regular um, yellow wood glue. You can use whatever brand you like, whether it be Tight Bond or Elmer's or, or what have you, but you don't need an awful lot of it because you don't want squeeze out. Spread it on all the edges of your pieces there and putting in this back spacer, go up against your square, push everything into the corner, making sure that it's all nice and tight. Now you're pushing down on it to make sure that the pieces line up perfectly. And you're also pushing in towards the square to get our square edge. Now we've got some squeeze out there and we're just gonna leave it for a minute or two to let that start setting up. And then we can get in there with a wet Q-tip and start cleaning up some of the squeeze out that we've uh, got coming out of our joints. So do the rest of those spacers with the dimensions that I mentioned or the ones that you've taken off the print and then we can move on.
And with those pieces pretty much set, we will put our other side of our frame in place, being careful to line things up. And using our square, we'll just make sure that it lines up with the end. Just like that. Again, it's imperative at this point that you're getting things perfectly lined up because everything from here on in is going to be based on this square frame. So if this frame is crooked or not square or not lined up, how can anything from here on in be lined up? So take your time, square up the frame and get it done. While we're waiting for the frame to dry up, I'm going to move on and make a few of the other pieces. And we're going to start by making these axles, uh, the two rear axles and the one front axle. Now, I have told you that I found discrepancies in these plans before, and I'm kind of calling a discrepancy here where this particular front axle here is showing that it's three quarters. There is no top dimension at all, but if I measure it on the plan, this is a three quarter by three quarter square. And yet the rear axles are only calling for 11 sixteenths by 11 sixteenths, which of course is 1 16th shy of three quarters. Now that's fine as long as the two rear axles are the same, but if the front axle is three or sorry, one sixteenth thicker, I'm looking at the way that everything is assembled and we have these front and rear leaf spring assemblies. Now I thought maybe there was a difference in measurements between these leaf spring assemblies for their thickness, but there actually isn't. They end up to be three eighths of an inch thick each both for the front and the rear wheels. So if that is the case and the leaf springs are all three eighths of an inch thick and I end up cutting this front axle at three quarters by three quarters, my front wheels are actually going to be one sixteenth lower than my rear wheels. And I'm not a fan of that. So I will change the dimension here to 11 sixteenths by 11 sixteenths for the front axles and I will cut the rear axles at their listed dimensions and then everything is copacetic and all the wheels line up. So first discrepancy found, we're going to do the axles, cut them as they are. The rear ones will have the hub in the middle of each of these. So these rear axles will actually be cut on a scroll saw. Nothing uh, fancy about it. The dimension at the top will be a little bigger and then of course we will cut them out as needed. The one thing that I will point out here, they're calling for holes to be drilled and uh, you may or may not be able to see here that on the axles they're allowing for a hole to be drilled a 5 16th of an inch hole and it will be one and a quarter inches deep. I actually don't do that on my models. I drill a through hole 5 16th all the way through because I do not use axle pins that they call for in these plans and instead I use my own and I run a dowel straight through to have a solid axle on both front and rear wheels. That's the only difference that I, uh, I do for this. So something to keep in mind, you may want to do solid axles. Uh, if not, make them as they are. Just again, you may want to adjust this dimension here to 11 sixteenths by 11 sixteenths, not three quarters by three quarters. So when you're making the axles, you want to do all of the drilling while the stock is still squared up. Don't take it over to the scroll saw and cut those center hubs out and all of that and then try to drill it. It's going to cause you some problems. So I've got a 5 16 drill bit in here. We're going to be drilling out these axles. And what I have is a hand screw clamp that I've drilled a half inch hole through while it was closed. And what that does is it holds this nice and square and I can just sit it in place. No worries about having to hold this thing and having it spin out of control and I can just slowly drill through making sure to clear the chips every once in a while. Drill it as far through as you can, then turn it over, put it in the hand screw clamp and finish drilling it from the other side to make the two holes meet. 
and by using that method you end up with a pretty clean hole straight through the piece. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's nicely centered and it's through right through both sides. So that's going to house our solid quarter inch axle. This is for the front of the rig. Now I'm going to go ahead and drill the ones for the back. You don't need a video of it. It's the same process. Okay, so the axles are cut. You can see them here. I just want to run through. It's kind of tip time now as far as things that can help you to make these builds a little easier. One of them is this, which is a calculator that uh, calculates in fractional inches as well as all the other regular functions. It also does millimeters if, uh, if that's the way that you prefer, and it does conversions between the two. But it really helps when trying to calculate distances because the way the plans are set up, sometimes you need to add measurements up and doing it in your head when you're dealing with fractional inches can really be a pain. So one of these can help. As well, this thing here, which is just a dirt cheap center finder, that can help as well with finding the center when drilling through with these axles. Another thing that may help you, in fact it will, is one of these, which is a circle template because there are certain times when you have to draw things out by hand and that would be the case when I worked with these axles. It all had to be done with by hand. A circle template really comes in handy. And last, of course, but definitely not least, is this was it which is a good quality draftsman uh, eraser sometimes sanding pencil lines off of wood sands too much off but if you use an eraser to remove the lines you can minimize your sanding and get rid of those lines completely so it's just something to keep in mind a few extra things that you could use to help you uh, along in this build and now that we have those axles cut, we're going to do a 1 8 round over on all sides and then we're going to attach them to our frame that we did earlier. Well, before we mount the axles onto the frame, we can see here on the drawing that it shows us that our axles actually get mounted to a leaf spring assembly. And if we flip over another page, we can see here that that particular assembly actually is made up of 1 8 inch material. So I've salvaged some scrap of walnut and cut it into 1 8 inch strips um, on, on the table saw here. And we're going to have to cut them to their specific widths, of course, because the front and the rear are different. But before we can move ahead with mounting our axles, we need to make these leaf spring assemblies. So that'll be our next step. As well, if you look at the drawing, you can see that everything goes together with the drive shafts going between the two rear axles. So because of that, we are really unable to mount both axles at the same time. So we need to do some prep and get these pieces cut up and dry fit and made up. And for that, it's going to take a bit of time. So I'm going to get the pieces cut up for these um, leaf springs and when I get those cut I'm going to show you a, a good method to glue them together and then once we get these all glued up and the other pieces cut then we're going to move on to getting our axles um, glued on to our frame assembly. All of the pieces are cut for the front and rear leaf springs and you just want to pay attention when making them because of course they are different widths of material. The same thickness but different widths. You want to cut them all at the same time when you're at the table saw so that they're all equal. And when setting them up, I just want to show you something here. Um, this is what they look like if you keep a crisp edge on them. Now, no leaf spring looks like that, and there is no definition between the individual pieces. But if you round over the edges with some light hand sanding, you end up with something that looks like this, which is a little more lifelike. You have to remember that we're not making an exact replica of the real McCoy. It's a representation of it. 
So you can see there where a little bit of uh, sanding over on the edges helps with some definition on these pieces. And all you want to do for assembly, these, these setup blocks that I have, and you've seen them here regularly on the show, I have two sets of them. They really help when it comes to these models because the difference between the lengths of these on all of them is three quarters of an inch between the smallest and to, to the middle piece and then to the next they're all one stepping up of three quarters of an inch so if you get your 3 8 setup block using a square here just for a straight edge you can line it up and then you know for your second level when you glue that in place there you know now that that is set exactly where it is that it needs to be because it's 3 8 from the end which means that this end is also 3 8 And then when you do the next one, when that's dried into place, you just move your setup block over and then that will set up for the next glue up. And that would be your leaf springs glued together. Not rocket science, but these setup blocks are another way to help you along the way for putting pieces together, aligning them up, and making sure that your measurements are right without actually having to lay down markings or bring your tape measure out onto the bench. So glue up those leaf springs and then, you know, once that's done, they can be glued to the frame. There is one more thing before you can mount these uh, leaf springs and remember that angle at the back and earlier I said at the profile for that spacer, it's really not necessary. We're going to cut it later to make sure that the ends line up nice and evenly. Well, here it is here. And uh, we end up using a, an angle finder to find out which angle to cut because the prints don't show it, but they do give you measurements for both ends of that angle so that you can measure it and see what it is. In this case, it's a 60 degree, and you can also see that don't even attempt to hold this with your hands. I mean, you can use your hands, but get clamps in there to help you with extra pressure and extra strength to hold it together. Um, Guys, that's really all the time that we have for this week's show. And I know it seems really slow going, but there's a lot of explanation as far as what tools to use to help you along the way. And as the build progresses, of course, I won't need to give you those explanations because you'll already know that information and know which tools to use. I can just say, use this to help you with this and that's it. No more explanation needed. Guys, I hope you're enjoying this. I know it's a slow start, but it's going to pick up, and we're going to carry it on next week, where I hope you're going to join me for yet another woodworking video.